Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another episode of Small Engines Questions and Answers. And first of all, I want to welcome all my new subscribers. Also, it's been a little bit difficult with the new commenting system on YouTube and Google+. Feel free to leave your comments as to how you feel about that new change. I also want to tell you guys that I get a lot of questions every single day. So it's impossible for me to respond to each single question. It's not that they're not important, it's just I do not have the time. So if you see any questions underneath any of my videos that haven't been answered yet, please do so if you know the correct answer. Also, I've got a fire in the wood stove today and recently I've added a gas furnace in my shop. It's a Resnor 75,000 BTUs. I'm also going to get a deflector put on it to deflect the heat toward the middle of the shop. There will be a video in the near future showing how we installed it and the specs on the heater. Now I'm going to get right into the questions. The first question I have to answer today is regarding fuel stabilizer. Somebody asked me, can you use fuel stabilizer for any season of the year? Well, my answer to that is yes, you can use it at any time in the year. You can even use it to store your fuel, whether it's winter or summer. This will add to the longevity of the shelf life of your fuel. Also, you can use the fuel stabilizer, whether it's in mixed gas for your two-stroke equipment or just regular gas without any oil in it. Now, if you're trying to protect your fuel from the effects of ethanol, you may want to get a product called Ethanol Shield. It is better than fuel stabilizer. Now, some fuel stabilizers say that they do protect against ethanol, but not all of them do. So just make sure you read the can before you add it to your fuel if you want to protect it against ethanol. Another question I got recently on lawnmowers is how can I prevent my deck from getting holes in it? Here's an older lawnmower and you can see that the deck is all cracked. There's small holes over here. Now the best way to keep a lawnmower from rotting like this is to flip it over each time you use it and scrape off the grass. Clean it off with the hose if you have to. It does a way better job as well. And make sure to keep your lawnmower in a nice dry area. If you keep it on grass like this, it's eventually going to rot right through. Now this one's just a parts lawnmower, that's why I keep it outside. But in general, if you keep it clean, it will last much longer. Now regardless of how well you look after your lawnmower, after so many years, it will decay. What some people do sometimes after they've cleaned their lawnmower is use a paintbrush and some old motor oil and spread it all underneath the deck. Somebody asked me the other day on which part of a spark plug should I put dielectric grease when replacing it. Well, when replacing a plug, if you're going to put dielectric grease, you should always put it over here where the spark plug boot goes on. Never put it at the tip here where the electrode is because it could cause it not to function. It comes in a tube like this. It makes it easier to remove the spark plug boot after a while and it does prevent the spark from arcing away from the tip. So remember, always stay away from this part, but you can put it on here. I do have a video that's been posted to my channel that shows how to use dielectric grease. I'll put the link to that video underneath today's video so you can go watch it. Somebody asked me the other day if the flywheel key is broken on my chainsaw, will it cause it to not have spark? Well, the answer to that is no. Usually you will still have spark even though the flywheel key may be broken. Some of the symptoms you may get if the flywheel key is broken is that it may not start at all. If it does start, it's going to backfire, it's not going to run properly. Also, it's going to kick back really hard when you go to pull it. Just to show you guys who aren't familiar with what I'm talking about here, this is what I mean, the little flywheel key over here. It's just a small piece of metal on the crankshaft that goes in a keyway hole on the flywheel. Now, some chainsaw flywheels have the key built right into the flywheel, so it's not a separate piece from the crankshaft and the flywheel. However, if it does break on your flywheel that the key's built in, you need to replace the whole flywheel to repair it correctly. Now, the reason that's going to have the symptoms I mentioned earlier is because the timing's going to be all off. The flywheel will not be at the correct place around the coil when the piston is up in the engine. Therefore, it's going to cause major problems. If you do have a similar problem, do check the flywheel key to make sure it's not snapped. And by the way, this goes for any engine, not just chainsaws. It can be your lawnmower, your rototiller, your snowblower or lawn tractor, whatever has an engine with a flywheel and a key. I've seen people scrap their equipment because they thought their engine was blown up. It's a very inexpensive part, it's just it might be a bit more work than what you're used to. Also, you have to be careful when removing a flywheel that you do not break it. But again, if it fixes your problem, it's much cheaper than buying a new piece of equipment. Somebody asked me the other day, will low octane fuel clog up the exhaust ports on my engine? Well, my personal opinion on that is probably no. I've never heard of that before. 
usually what clogs up exhaust ports, especially on two cycle engines, is that there's too much oil in the gas. Basically what happens is carbon builds up around your exhaust port, it can break off and get in between the cylinder and the piston and score it up and then your engine doesn't want to run anymore. What I recommend doing is if you're buying a new piece of equipment is use the fuel that they recommend. For example, some chainsaw manufacturers specifically state that you should use high octane fuel in their equipment. Whatever I work on and end up refueling, I use high octane fuel and I've never had a problem with it. As you can see, I've got a lot of snow blowers here in the shop. Here in Canada, it's winter time almost and people are getting their blowers ready. A question I got the other day is what are the advantages to attract snow blower in comparison to one with wheels? Well, the biggest advantages I've seen with tracked snow blowers is that the traction is much better. I've hardly ever seen a tracked snow blower spin, whereas one with wheels will spin a lot easier. Sometimes when you want to blow snow where the snow plow went, you do need a lot of traction and the tracks do help for that. Personally, I prefer snow blower with wheels. I find it's easier to move around, especially if the engine is not running. And on some snow blowers with tracks, it's harder to turn them. They may not have the easy steer option on them. And they can be quite hard to move if the engine dies on you. The other day a YouTuber told me he's got a blown up engine in his garage and he wants to fix it up. So he asked me which parts should I order? Well my answer to his question was you should take your engine apart first to see which parts you're going to need to order. Sometimes you may think all I need is this or that but when you rip the engine apart you see that you need a lot more parts and sometimes it ends up not being worth repairing the engine. Also if you order the parts before taking it apart and you realize you need more parts it's just going to cost you more in shipping. Even if you buy them online or from certain small engine shops nearby, they will still charge you shipping sometimes on special order parts. Here's a tip for today as well. Some people come in and say, I can't take the gas cap off my pull and chainsaw. They're wondering, is it the tank that's messed up or is it the gas cap? Well, my answer to that is replace the gas cap. Sometimes people file down the threads, it goes in a bit easier. However, some people don't know how to do that. So just go ahead and buy a brand new cap and you're going to realize that it goes in much easier after that. For example, on this chainsaw here, I need a pair of pliers to remove the cap and to put it back on. Therefore, this saw here will definitely get a brand new gas cap. So that'll be it for today's Q&A, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and have yourselves a great weekend.